coffee first? No. Can we run to a coffee shop? No! We're gonna run for the sake of running. What you used to love. What happened to you in San Francisco? Hills. Insanely steep hills. We're gonna get you back into shape. Come on. Oh, we should tell people where we're going in case we have heart attacks and don't come back. Oh, Peter's at the park with the kids and Mom's at the farmer's market with Lauren. Hey, why don't we run to the farmer's market? Get some coffee. The report's due on Friday and it has to be at least ten pages. Ten pages about my life, oh dear. Not your whole life, just what it was like when you were my age. When were you my age? I'm 65. You know what year this is. Do the math. So, tell me some stories. Oh, oh sweetheart. Um, I'm in pursuit of the perfect summer squash at the moment. I'd have to have some time to, to collect my thoughts. If I can remember back that far. Can we talk tonight? Or tomorrow night. You know? We shall see. Oh, for pity's sake. What is it? Do you know him, Grandma? Well, he's, he's one of my foster... He's, he's a client of mine. Help me get these down. I just want to cut through all the red tape and the lawyers and the... Law? Well, yeah, some of it. I mean, get rid of the extraneous BS. Just do the work. Are you on speed or something? <laughs> You're getting no. You're getting manic. <laughs> you do this every day? Really, I haven't done it since you left for San Francisco, but I figured now that you're back, we can get into routine. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have to find yourself another exercise buddy. I want to slide downhill into middle age. You're welcome to join me. Oh, we can't give up now. These are supposed to be the most productive years of our lives. <laughs> <sighs> Nothing. What? Nothing. You meant something by that, yeah. No. You just have to tell me what it is. God, here we go. What? I'm trying to have a meaningful conversation with my brother. Is that so bad? Why does it have to be meaningful? Can't we just relax? You love your job. You're inspired. Good for you, but not everybody's turned up to 11 like you are. <sighs> Sorry. Okay. Look, I don't, uh, I don't want to slow you down. Why don't you go on? I'm going to hang here for a while. Oh, come on. Go. Run. I'm early. First day back. I'm a little excited. Right. I forgot. Today's the day we revolutionized juvenile courts. Is that sarcasm? Does my optimism bother you? <clears throat> Who's she? Lady Justice. Or something. Judge Sobel had her delivered to me this morning to say thank you for serving in accountability. I'm thinking about naming her Betty. Hmm. I doubt you get any door prizes for coming here. Well, I'm glad you did. Me too, me too. Although it was an amazing two weeks down there in the basement. I, I really wish you could have been there. I like it here. I'm going to get coffee. You want anything? Oh, decaf soy tea latte, extra hot. And, um, sprinkle a little nutmeg on top. Nothing for me. I'm so happy we're back. I, I, I mean, I could barely sleep last night. You know, not that I didn't enjoy being hall monitor for the past two weeks, but... The courtroom? 
That's where all the magic happens. You, you do remember that I fired you, right? You told me I could have a month. A month to find a job. I know. You're really taking this tough love thing to heart, aren't you? Well, no, I, I, I I'm just... I'm on it! Okay. Edie, good morning. I'm expecting a visitor. Uh, it's this young man, Donovan Norwood. Someone from Expansion House is driving him over. Now, I want you to come and find me the moment he arrives. Okay, sure. Um... Yes? Mr. Potter's looking for you. Maxine? Excuse me, please. Morning, Sean. Today's paper. What about it? You haven't seen it? Vincent often swipes my paper and takes it to his room. I've lodged a complaint. A but... reporter was present at your impassioned meltdown at the coalition luncheon. And yet we dine. Four words I won't soon forget. Is that what I said? It's a bit of a blur. Well, it certainly focused the reporter's attention on Anthony Byrd. She did some research, ran his picture. May I see it? Yeah. She refers to us as incompetent and shameful and demands that we all resign. It is shameful to misplace a child, Sean. If it takes a newspaper article to put that in our heads, then so be it. We should clean up our own house, Maxine. You mean we should save our own asses? Mrs. Gray, the driver from Expansion House just called. Donovan Norwood is downstairs but refuses to come up. Thank you, Edie. Sean, uh, Sean, please excuse me. What on earth were you thinking? You people aren't getting me adopted. You put your name and photograph and telephone number on pieces of paper and hand them out to strangers? It's advertising. It's a pedophile's dream. I want a real home, Mrs. Gray. I don't want a bed in some hotel for rejects. I have never stopped looking for an adoptive home placement for you. But you know how this goes. At your age, with your juvenile record... That was a long time ago. I see how you've turned your life around. And you're on track to graduate next spring. So I'm supposed to just be thankful? Stop hoping for anything big? I turn 18 in a year. Then it's all over. It most certainly is not. I have every confidence that in a year, you will be able to go out into the world and create the life you want. What I want is two people with a camera at my graduation. Somebody to call my name out. Say smile, that's what I want. I got no history, Mrs. Gray. I got a record, but no history. You want a family to adopt you before you graduate? Yeah, that's right. Well, I don't know if I could provide that for you, Donovan, but I... But I will continue to try. Meanwhile, no more flyers, no skywriting, no walking around with sandwich boards, you understand? Go to school. Don't litter. Starting the sentencing phase of the manslaughter trial of Toby Carroll. Counselors Frank and Canton. Welcome back, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, well, I am in receipt of uh, Toby's written confession, and I have looked over his psych evaluation. But I have some questions, so I'd like to schedule some testimony from uh, his psychiatrist. Your Honor, if I may. Assistant State's Attorney Frank and I have arrived at a possible sentence which would be agreeable to both sides. Really? What might that be? Uh, two years in a juvenile detention center with psych facilities, followed by four years of intensive and supervised probation. The state feels it is a fair sentence, Your Honor, and will address Toby's medical needs. Well, I love it when you guys work together, and I appreciate the recommendation. Uh, however, uh, I, I would like to hear from Toby's doctor myself. Uh, all due respect, Your Honor, but this has been an excruciating ordeal for the Carrolls and their wishes to move past these proceedings as soon as possible. My client has confessed to the crime. Y your client attempted to rob an 80-year-old man and ended up killing him. This was not just any crime. This was felony murder. Manslaughter, Your Honor. Felony murder pleaded down to manslaughter, and it is the responsibility of this court to know all that is possible about the nature of the offense and the offender before a sentence is handed down. Now, I am not saying that the suggested sentence will not ultimately prevail. I just need time and testimony to confirm it. So, 
What time can we hear testimony tomorrow, Mr. Van Exel? Mr. Van Exel? Doc, is completely full. Uh, well, we're going to have to make time then. Tomorrow, 11.30. Tomorrow, 11.30. See everyone then. Thank you. What just happened back there? I'm not exactly sure myself. It was a rubber stamp case. The kid confessed. They worked out a sentence. He's going to get help. Why do we need testimony? I I'm doing my job. While you were gone, your cases didn't just disappear with you. They accumulated. As of this morning, we have 74 new cases, six new trials. If you keep going on, this, we're never going to catch up. That's not my problem. No, you're making everybody else's problem. Now it's mine. Jillian called. When? Before, here in the shower. Is there Tabasco? Hmm. Amy needs to hit the supermarket. Mom talk to you? About what? I don't know. Nothing? Anything? Mom doesn't talk to me. No one talks to me. Lauren. Lauren talks to me. Oh, not as much as she used to. I need to borrow $15,000. From me? I'll pay it back. <laughs> what happened to your big book contract? I canceled it. <laughs> I gotta return my advance. I have a month. <laughs> what the hell happened? <laughs> Don't try to make me feel worse about it. Can you lend me the money? I don't know. I haven't had my head in the business lately. The band, stuff with Jillian. I'll talk to the accountant. I'll see what I can do. So, you know, thanks. Look, by the way, don't, um... Won't say a word. <laughs> Continuing. Toby suffers from oppositional defiant disorder, ODD. He has an impaired ability to control his impulses. As an infant and toddler, he would often strike out at his playmates for no reason. In the first grade, he threw a chair at a teacher who reprimanded him in class. And, and these incidents are distinguished from your run-of-the-mill temper tantrums, how? He's at the mercy of his brain chemistry. Toby is a sweet child under most circumstances, but his behavior can be irrational. Here's what I don't get. ODD is associated with violent outbursts, such as uh, throwing his chair or the time he apparently hit his hockey coach with a stick because he pulled him off the ice. All of the incidents in Toby's past fall into that category, poor impulse control. But he has admitted to killing a man within the course of a premeditated armed robbery. Isn't that inconsistent with the diagnosis? No diagnosis is complete, Your Honor. ODD is not associated with premeditated acts, but it certainly doesn't preclude them. He's on a host of psychiatric drugs. Which have been working extremely well up until the... the final incident. He murdered someone, Doctor. I wouldn't call that working. I want to hear from Toby. I can move you next trial, and we can see him at 10 in the morning. Let's do that. Tomorrow, 10 a.m. All right, Toby? OK. Thank you. How many calls? At least a dozen. All of them specific to Anthony Bird? It appears so, yeah. One newspaper article, 12 phone calls. That's a good percentage. I shall go to more luncheons. Any emails? I'm not sure. The paper's in the process of forwarding everything. Well, if this is the result, then I should uh, take ads in the paper for all my foster children. <laughs> Maxine, don't you dare. Hello, Sean. Ignacio, thank God. Would you go distract Maxine? From what? Self-destruction. How do you suggest I do that? I don't know. Just jiggle your keys in front of her face. Just go over there. 
Hello. Hello, Ignacio. I'm searching for something. If you'd give me just a moment, please. Nice day out. Is it? Are you free for dinner this week? Dinner with you? That would be the idea, yes. That is not possible. Next week? Well, the week is not the issue. Um, I do not date married men, knowingly. I thought we were past this. No. But we went to the rock. In the and... daytime and no meals were consumed. So the problem is nighttime and we're not supposed to eat anything? Dating happens at night, traditionally, so yes. Nighttime is the issue. I have no real feelings about the food. So we could have breakfast. And then you could explain this list of cockamamie rules you've apparently written for our relationship. One of my rules is we do not refer to this as a relationship. I'll pick you up around... We'll meet at uh, the Angelique Bakery at 8 o'clock, if that is acceptable. It is. Guess. Guess what I just did. What? I bought a boat. What? Online? On you can't buy. You can't buy a boat online. I mean, you can, but but you shouldn't. Anyway, you gotta you gotta sail it. See how it feels. You know. Where's your suit? I, I wasn't. I went. I bought a boat. I wasn't wearing a suit. So here. Let's go sailing. Right. Come on. Let's take a few days off and go sailing. David, I can't. Why not? Well, work isn't an excuse. Come on. Well, during the work week it is. All right, we'll go this weekend, Saturday then. Okay, here's the thing. Don't tell me you don't like sailing. I'm not crazy about sailing. I had a sailing incident a few years ago, and it's just it's just not that fun for me. Okay, I can, um... And before you try to tell me that you can change my mind about sailing, others have tried. Believe me. <laughs> Let's, um, all right, we'll, we'll forget it's a, forget it's a boat, okay? We'll leave it in the slip. We'll have dinner on the deck and it'll be a restaurant, like a, a floating restaurant. Okay, about the floating thing? The pier, we can eat dinner on the pier. We'll look at the boat. It'll be something that we, we look at, but we don't float on, unless, of course, you change your mind once we're there. Dinner on or near a boat? Tomorrow night. Aye, aye, Captain. As you were. Both of you. It's gonna be fun. Maybe you could tell me some stories about when Grandma was little. I, I don't know that much stuff, honey. Um, I know her mother died when she was 10. What was she like, Grandma's mother? I don't know. Maybe you can find out for me. Grandma! Great! I've got a bunch of questions for you. I need to finish my class project, so if you have a couple minutes, oh, I can... Oh, uh, sweetheart, um, not now. I've just come home for a quick bite, and I have to get back to the office. Uh, but you promised. Well, I, I don't believe I've made an actual promise. It was more like a, we shall see, and, and what I see is that uh, I have to get back to the office. Well, what am I supposed to do? Perhaps you could write about your other grandmother. Lauren? Honey? What was that? Something between me and my granddaughter. Who happens to be my daughter. Why can't you make a little time for her? I don't have a little time. She's trying to connect with you, Mom, and you're pawning her off into Michael's mother. She always struck me as one of those people who had a perfectly lovely childhood with hopscotch and pigtails, and uh, I don't have that story well, in Well, tell her the one you have. For that matter, tell me the one you have. I, I know your mother died when you were 10. 11. 11? I'm not in the mood for this, Amy. All I wanted was to have a quiet dinner. Well, you live in a house full of people, Mom. It's never quiet. And that, that is precisely the problem. Oh, come on, Mom. Your mother died when you were 11. What happened after that? Mm. 
so enjoy these Indian summers. That's how I imagine heaven. <laughs> uh, Mama asked about you. How, how is your mother? She's uh, taking up bowling. Oh, how perfectly appropriate. <laughs> You know, a client offered me two tickets to the symphony on Friday night. Um, I was thinking you and I could go and enjoy it together. I'm afraid that will be against the rules. No evening dates is at the top of my list. You actually made a list. Uh, well, I, I wanted to, uh, to be clear. Oh, yeah, well, what else is on this list of yours? Oh, well, I'm, I'm afraid it's quite, uh, quite lengthy. Um, no out-of-town getaways, nothing involving air travel, no dancing. Ah, we've already danced twice. And it shan't be thrice until further notice. You know, you're not the only one that can make a list. I can make my own list. Very well. No more window shopping. Afternoon bridge, bye-bye. No films with subtitles. <laughs> and I'm not going to cook for you anymore. When did you ever cook for me? I was planning paella with a picture of my own special sangria. No drinking together. It's on my list. You know what else is on my list? Lists. I'm sorry, Ignacio, but these are my boundaries. How are you doing today, Toby? Okay, I guess. I'm just gonna ask you a few questions that have already been asked. Just to get some clarity, okay? Okay. All right. So, tell me what happened the night of the robbery. My brother was going to this mini mall near my house to try and get some beer, and he asked me if I wanted to come. And I got this idea to try and rob someone. He didn't know I was going to do it. And I took my dad's gun and hid it in my sweatshirt. Go on. Martin went inside, and I sat in the parking lot watching the people until I saw this one guy. He was kind of old, and I figured he wouldn't fight back. So what did you do? I told him to give me his money, but he wouldn't. So I shot him. Really? Yeah. And then I jumped into Martin's car, but someone saw the license plate. So that night, the police came, and I told them what happened. Do you feel bad about what you did? I guess. You guess? I mean, yes, I do. Your Honor, if this is all on record, then is this really necessary? I think it is. Do you feel as bad as, say, uh, the time you punched the bus driver when he asked you to put on a seatbelt? Well, that was bad. Sometimes my head gets all... I don't know, fuzzy? And then I can't think straight. And I wrote him a note saying I was sorry about that. Well, what about when you were in fifth grade and hit your hockey coach with a stick? Toby? That was Mr. Yashura, my hockey coach. I didn't mean to hit him. I don't even know why I did. He was my friend. You may step down, Toby. I'm sorry, just uh, one, one more question. Um, where did your father keep his gun? Okay. Never mind. I'll read the record. Canceled my newspaper subscription this morning. Thanks to you, I now live in fear of the written word. People are afraid of all sorts of things, Sean. You seem determined to turn this department into a laughing stock. Or, or would you just be satisfied with my getting fired? It's my name on that ad, not yours. It is inappropriate and unprofessional, not to mention humiliating, to have a 17-year-old boy auctioned off like a lost dog. If this works for Donovan, as well as it is working for Anthony Bird. No, Maxine, I got a call from Sergeant Lenhart. The Anthony Bird leads are going nowhere. They received over 100 calls. Mr. Potter, I'm sorry to interrupt. What is it, Edie? Franklin Burroughs is here. He wants Maxine. 
Would that be Assemblyman Franklin Burroughs? I believe it is, yes. The police, the media, now a politician. Great. So, how long do you think this case is going to drag on? As long as it takes. I'm trying to figure out why I can't be crying over hitting his hockey coach. Felt nothing when he shot an old man. He's a sick kid, and I pushed two cases already. This keeps dragging. We're looking at three. Fine, push them all. Got out to Sobel. I will. I told you from now on, when we hear cases, we're really going to hear them. This case has already been heard. Well, not by me. Oh, so this is territorial. No, it's about the process and. You know what? I'm sick of having this conversation. I know what I'm doing. talk about it much because I've always felt such shame about it. I was arrested for robbery when I was 14. The store clerk was hurt. Another kid did it, not me. But the judge had the option of trying me as an adult. If it had been today, he probably would have, and my life would have turned out very differently. But he gave me a second chance. He sent me down to juvenile hall where I had some counselors that really seemed to care whether or not I made it. Only takes one, really, but I had several. My wife called me this morning. She was crying, and she told me to read the paper. Miss Gray. I want to offer Donovan what was given to me. A mentor. Somebody he can talk to. It may not be enough, or even what he wants, but I'm here. And so's my family. I'm so glad I voted for you. I will, um, I'll make the arrangements for you and your wife to meet Donovan. Thank you. See, air feels good on my face. Feels even better when you're actually out at sea. <laughs> so tell me what happened. The incident. It was no big deal. It was just a panic attack. What happened? A college friend of mine invited me to go, and I'm uh, pretty adventurous, so it never occurred to me I couldn't do it. Right. And uh, it was okay for a while. But then suddenly the sails filled up, and we were going really fast, and my friend yelled, lean into the wind, and I couldn't do it. I was frozen. My body literally couldn't do it. It was powerful, and I don't know, something about the wind and gravity and, and surrendering to that and relaxing into the force of nature. I, I, I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't let it take you. Exactly. It's a control issue. I'm not wanting to die. Come here. What? Here, stand up. I wanna, I'm going to try something. Here, give me your wine. You want to try a seizure? Yeah. Haven't we done it all? No, no, no. No. <laughs> Turn around. All right, good. What are you doing? Not involve tickling. No, minor amounts of tickling. No tickling. Okay. Fall back. Fall back. 
I'm serious. Fall backwards. I'll, I'll catch you. I don't want to do a stupid trust exercise, David. What's next? A, a ropes course to see if I'm a team player? Come on, please. Come on. <laughs> 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 I'm having fun. No. Testing is not that fun for me. It's not. It's, it's not a test. I, I just want you to feel comfortable. Yeah, I want you. To, I want you to feel safe. I do feel safe with you. I, look, I want us to go sailing together. Okay, I want you to trust me enough to to lean into the wind. Well, I don't want to do that. Okay. Okay. Let's just be here, okay? Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right, I'm a sure. good time before. My grandma was the first woman to cross the ocean in a cloth-footed bathtub. Lauren. I let her finish. She cooked the world's largest waffle, she invented Irish coffee in the snooze alarm, and she sings opera. Did you help her with this? The uh, snooze alarm was mine. Lauren, you can't hand in a work of fiction. What am I supposed to do? She won't talk to me. Uh, okay, um, ice skating. She was a great ice skater as a kid. Big whoop. The way she met Dad, that's, that's it. Yeah, 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 the fairy. They were both with other people. And they found their way to the top deck, and they had this amazing conversation all night long in the wind and the rain. And pretty soon after that, Peter was born. Yeah, you can leave that out. Oh, and Dad's business. Mom helped build Dad's business up from nothing. And, and Peter, you can step in here. Peter? Uh, I'd rather not. See? No one wants to talk to me. What's wrong with you? Business is in trouble, okay? There. Now you both know. Bad trouble? Is there good trouble? What are we talking about, Peter? <sighs> Gray and Grand Insurance is heading towards insolvency. Yes, and it's all my fault. I've taken my eye off the ball, and that's all I want to say about it. Excuse me. Peter, you, you can't just leave the room. We have to talk about this. It's a family business. Oh, really? Because I haven't seen the family there in years. It wasn't cool enough, not sexy enough for you two, so it got dumped on me. Oh, don't even, Peter. You couldn't wait to work there, right, Vincent? Well, tell me, Amy. Tell me how I felt when I was 22 and Dad showed me the nameplate he had engraved with my name on it, sitting on the desk he had picked out for me in the office right next to his. Tell me how I felt, please. Because you seem to have a better memory of it than I do. Sorry, man. I'd like to ask Martin Carroll a few questions. Uh, Your Honor, he's not on trial. No, but his little brother is going away soon, and I'd like to know how he feels about it. Martin, can you stand up, please? Well, this must be hard on you. <clears throat> yeah, well, it's always been hard. Which part? Everything. You know, Toby. It's harder on my parents. How's that? Well, they've done everything he's needed. Doctors, shrinks, physical therapists. Nothing seems to work for long. But you're doing well, aren't you? Uh, I see you're getting ready to graduate high school early. You got your eye on, on Brown, maybe even Harvard. Well, my dad went to both of them, so yeah, I'd like to continue the family tradition. Well, tradition is very important. Do you have anything you'd like to say to your brother now? Not really. I mean, I, I can't say anything he hasn't already heard. He knows I'm here for him. You look after him, don't you? Try to. Does he ever get mad at you? Not much. Do you ever get mad at him? No. He can't help it. You know, the way he is, he just got a bad deal. We all did. Okay. Well, I have no more questions, Martin. Thank you. 
counselors, I believe I've heard enough. We can move forward. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> in considering Toby Carroll's sentence, I have taken into account his uh, medical and psychological histories, the degree of his impairment, and the viciousness of the crime. Uh, I think we all agree the need for treatment is profound here. But the nature of this crime, the, the careful premeditation, does not fit into the profile of Toby's mental illness. Moreover, Toby has shown no remorse for this crime. So I will not accept the recommended sentence. Instead, I believe that in the best interest and safety of all, there is no substitution for long-term incarceration. Therefore, uh, I am sentencing Toby to a maximum security facility until he is 21 years old with the recommendation that he stay incarcerated until he is 25 years old. Marshal, you may remove Toby into immediate custody. No, no, I will appeal this ruling immediately. Yes. Well, if anybody has any, any information that would make me change my mind, I suggest they say it right away. Mr. and Mrs. Carroll? Please, don't let them... Really? Please. Nothing. Go. You're just going to let this happen? Your Honor, is this some sort of a test? S sit, sit down, Mr. Canton. Toby, did you commit this crime? Look at me in the eye and tell me that you committed this crime. Tell me how you felt when you aimed a gun in the face of an 80-year-old man and pulled the trigger. Objection. What did it feel like to see him scream and fall and bleed? Was it anything like you felt when you hurt your hockey coach or the I, bus driver? I, Objection, Toby, look Honor. at me, look only at me, and tell me the truth. Did you commit this crime? Take all the time you want to. Okay. I'll be right outside. Thanks again. Good to meet you, Dad. Don't let the thread Maxine the matchmaker. Things seem to be going pretty well in there. Oh, uh, they are. The wife's nice. She's a school teacher, which in my book puts her on the side of the angels. You gotta celebrate the wins, Maxine. Yes, of course. I just I just wanted to give them a little time alone. Yes, hello, this is Maxine Gray with the Department of Children and Families. I, um, I understand that you used to run a daycare center that, that a boy named Anthony Bird may have attended. Yeah. I, I understand. Yes, I'm aware of that. I just, I wanted to double check. It's a new low. Welcome back. I get it now. What? Hearing cases. I, I get it now. It's worth it. Thank you. But please, feel free to speed it up. Speed it up. <laughs> That's right. Donna, where are you going? Leaving. For the night? Forever. I got a job. I'm officially a minor's counsel. Court appointed. That's fantastic. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, I know it's a little sudden, but, uh, you know, the offer came in. They wanted me to start right away. Oh, I've arranged a temp clerk for you. Just like that? Just like that. We'll miss you. Me too, Bruce. Me too. Wow, Donna, I... I, I know I've been the one pushing for this, but I just, um... It, it feels too soon. I'm not ready. It's better this way. Clean break. Fresh start. Thank you, Judge Gray. Thank you for... Every single thing. As soon as you get settled, lunch. You got it. I'll call. You better. What's that? Oh, it's my new office. Hartford Youth Advocates. I'll see you in the cafe. What are you doing? shouldn't be smoking. Never mind. I drove on the sidewalk to get here. Why? So as not to lose the light. Are you afraid of the dark? No, you are. 
I've been doing a lot of thinking, Mrs. Gray. Maxine. Don't interrupt, please, my list. These last couple of weeks have been very instructive. What exactly have you learned? I've learned that I should never make a sharp right-hand turn when I'm carrying a potted pear cactus in my front seat. Oh, I'm so sorry. And I've also learned the cost of boarding up the windows to my heart. The sun is going down. I'm almost finished. I've learned that facing unpleasantness makes room for new happiness. And I've learned to share my truth so that I won't lose those that I love. It'll be dark soon. I've contacted a lawyer. I've started divorce proceedings. I simply wanted you to know that. Yeah, it looks like I made it in under the wire. Good night, Mrs. Gray. Sweetheart. Grandma. I thought if you were awake, you might want to talk for, for a while. Sure. You have such lovely hair. I had hair just like that when I was your age. And look what happened to it. Is this still pretty? <laughs> I was born in 1939 in Indianola, Iowa. My mama died when I was 11 years old. And by the time I was your age, uh, well, the truth is I never was your age. Um, I was responsible for the house and the food, cleaning. A grown up, really, from that time. And, of course, I was still in school. I loved school. I had a teacher named Miss Muscatine. And, um... We used to call our teachers Miss and Mrs. And sometimes Mr. in those days. And I remember wishing that my dad would fall in love with Miss Muscatine and then she could be my mother. I thought for a long time I was going to be a teacher. Stay tuned for scenes from our next episode.